<laughs> and see, and they paid for his education. Like, yeah, that's good, Eric. Yeah. See, I don't want to sound like a snob, but if I'm going to watch TV, it's going to be something cultured and educational, like People's Court. <laughs> Laugh if you want to, but I'm going to tell you something. If my neighbor's cat ever pees on my rug, <laughs> and she won't pay to have it cleaned, I may go see Judge Walker myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I like about that show? Halfway through the show, they pause long enough to tell me and you, they say, these people are not professional actors. <laughs> Had me fooled for so long. Of course, one good thing about television, though, the commercials are getting honest. There's one on now that tells the truth. You've heard it. It's not a car. It's a Volkswagen. <laughs> well, it's about time they fessed up on that. <laughs> And then, of course, they still got the stupid commercials, like the one for X-Lax. We're talking about a laxative now. In the commercial, you've got this grown woman talking to her grown daughter. And they refer to X-Lax as their family's best friend. <laughs> Wonder where in the hell they go for Christmas dinner. I mean... <laughs> the next time that commercial is on, listen carefully to what the man says. He's talking about a laxative. He says, and I quote, it works while you sleep. <laughs> now, I don't want that. Mm -mm. No, I want to be up and awake, ready to go. I hope y'all don't puke. <laughs> oh, my. You know, let me tell you something. Have you ever met somebody for the first time in your life, and you try to think of a word that best describes them, and no matter how hard you think, you keep coming back to the basic word stupid? <laughs> this is a real person. His name's John McDonald. He owns a comedy club up in Milwaukee. We were sitting around one night in his office watching television. They had a commercial come on to promote a movie. They said, coming soon to a theater near you. And John said, now how in the hell do they know where I live? <laughs> Scared me. <laughs> you got to learn to have a good time out there. People take life too serious. See, no matter how, what kind of job you got, how much money you're making, what kind of house you live in, you have a day that comes along every now and then where you feel like your life's in a rut. That everybody around you is doing better than you. They're making more money than you. They're living in a better house than you. They're happier than you. We feel bored. On a day like that, you need some excitement in your life. A spark. You remember what I'm telling you, and I wouldn't tell you wrong. It is against the law to go through a red light. It is not against the law to stop on green. <laughs> I do that all the time. Oh, it's chaos. <laughs> See, they didn't think anybody would ever do it. There's no law on the books. The policeman's going to pull you over, and he's going to say, hey, you stopped on green. And you can say, yeah, I know it. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> You ever hear somebody say this? I'm out of work, I don't have any money, I can't go anywhere, but I still like to see other people have a good time. <laughs> liars, liars, liars. I'm going to be honest with you, if I'm miserable, I'm going to mess up somebody's life. <laughs> Here's what you can do. See, if you're not working, all you're doing is watching television. So any day, Monday through Friday, right at lunchtime, when McDonald's is the busiest, Go through their drive-in window, order a bunch of stuff, then pretend your car won't start. <laughs> Just sit there and block the window. Sometimes you'll have cars lined up a half mile, and every one of them's got to be back to work in 30 minutes, except you. And you ain't got diddly squat today. You can talk to them if you want to. You can say things like, how long y'all get for lunch? <laughs> 
And tell you these people, it's out of work. They keep filling out job applications. Nobody calls them back. The next time you fill out a job application, do it for you. Have some fun with it. See, it's an insult anyway. Three pages long, stupid questions like, how many foreign languages do you speak? As if we're going to need that at the Waffle House. Yeah. <laughs> And every application you filled out in your life, they got a place on there for you to put down your hobbies. They want to know about your hobbies. Why? Next time, put down bowling, breakdancing, or having fits, either one. Picking up aluminum cans. Driving around the neighborhood looking for cracks in the asphalt. And killing dogs. I mean, and, and where it says nearest relative, put 12 miles. <laughs> what you do? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and, and don't just forget about it now. Go back every day and sit in their lobby. Stare at them. You know? <laughs> Tell them you want to change something on the application. <laughs> and for a split second, they'll have hope for you. <laughs> Say, yeah, I don't kill dogs no more. <laughs> Mark that out. <laughs> cats. I'm killing cats now. <laughs> um, see, I'll tell you something. Whether you live to be 40 or whether you live to be 80, in the total scheme of things, life is short. Very short. you got to learn to get a kick out of every day. I know people who will let early morning traffic congestion on the way to work ruin their whole day. With all the real problems in the world, that's a little bit silly of us, I think. Have a new attitude out there. You get bogged down in morning traffic, look at the man in the car next to you, give him a smile, and point at his wheel. <laughs> He'll pull over and you can go right on through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 you know, let me tell you, you know you meet strange people everywhere. See, when you're on the road, the people who own these comedy clubs, they try to entertain you all the time. And they just want to entertain you. That's nice. They're trying to be nice. But I tell them, I say, I don't want to be entertained. I want to be left alone. <laughs> we was down in Texas not long ago, and this guy that owned the club, he said, oh, you must go see our zoo. I said, I don't want to. <laughs> I've seen every zoo from South Carolina to San Diego. I don't want to see another one. He said, you've never seen our zoo. I said, does it have animals in cages? I said, believe me, I've seen it. Now, this is a true story. So he takes us to Six Flags over Texas, and they got these big cable cars that go way up, like 1,500, 1,800 feet up in there. It was real hot. They hold about 28 people. It was packed. There's a guy running it. And there's a woman on that cable car with us. She talked a mile a minute. She just talked. She never shut up. And it's hot. So way up in this cable car, she had two little kids. They had candy on their hand. And they would just come around and touch you. <laughs> it's all they did. They didn't miss nobody. <laughs> Walk up to you, grin, and then just touch you. <laughs> it's like it was their job. <laughs> I swear to you, they weren't eating candy. There was none in their mouth. There was none on their face. Just on their hands. It's like before they left that morning, the mother said, okay, kids, we're going to Six Flags. Come here, let's put some candy on your hand. Anyway. So anyway, we're way, it's ain't nothing you can do. I mean, they just come up and touch you. It's not like the rats. You can't stomp them in the head. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, so we're out in the cable car, and their mother, the one that talks so much, she says, what happens if the cable breaks? What happens if the cable breaks? And the guy running, he said, man, the cable's not going to break. I know it's not going to break. I didn't say it was going to break. I said, what if it does? And everybody's going, shh. She said, well, what if the cable breaks? Everybody said, lady, the cable's not going to break. I know it's not going to break. I didn't say it was going to break. I said, what if it does break? Everybody said, shh, you're scaring the kids. Well, I'm just saying, what if the cable breaks? And everybody said, ma'am, the cable's not going to break. She said, I know it's not. I didn't say it was. I said, what if it does? What do we do? And finally, I had had enough. I said, we die, <laughs> and you'll be quiet. 